number of states, okay, let's say that you have two states, okay, you consider a tape here, and initially the tape is empty, okay, you just have uh, a zero here and uh, just sharps everywhere. Okay. And you want to find the Turing machine with two states, okay, that will stop after writing the longest sequence of ones. Okay, you want to write the longest sequence possible of ones. Okay, so you will want you will have ones forever here, from here to here at the end of the execution, and the machine stop. Okay, if the machine didn't stop, then uh, it would keep writing once and going right all the time. Okay, so it will not be fair. So you want it to stop at some point. Okay. Well, it turns out that even for very 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 small value of uh, of uh, the number of states, even with very, very few states, we can already write numbers which are completely crazy. For instance, if you allow 12 states, if you have 12 states here, then you can build a sequence or of, let's write it, at least 6 times 4096 to the 4096 to the 4096 to the 4096 times. Okay, that's a pretty huge tower. Uh, to a form. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this number is huge. I mean, it's huge. It's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know how many times the size of the universe it doesn't even matter. And, uh, and you write it with only 12 states. Okay, you just need 12 states and two letters. And you, you're able to write that number of ones. Okay? So that's completely crazy. I mean, uh, and for instance, if you remove one to this number, then you get something which is a little bit higher. Okay? A complexity will be a little bit higher. But what you know is that this number is surrounded by numbers of very high complexity. Okay? So it has a lot of problems, this, uh, this definition. Okay? But these are also problems that are inherent to computation. Okay? If you allow any kind of computation, okay, any time of computation, then you will get these issues. Okay? There are something which is inherent to computation that we've seen before. You, you have indecidability, you have everything. You know, since everything is discrete, nothing is smooth. You're in discrete space. You're in a discrete space, so nothing is smooth. And, uh, even even if you were in a continuum space, you can define uh, you can define also a model of computation on continuum space, and as soon as you have computation, then everything just collapses. I mean, smoothness does not exist in computation world. Okay, and uh, and and this is an issue here that we have to face at some point. Okay, and with the complexity here, uh, that's a big issue. So, there was some recent progress in computer science by, but you may be surprised, cryptographers. So, why do cryptographers care about complexity? Because they care about randomness. Why do they care about randomness? It's because randomness are hard to guess. It's hard to guess. Okay, and that's exactly what cryptographers want to do. They want to transform a message in such a way that it is, looks random to anyone. Okay, and what did they discover? So at first there was Shannon, okay, who, who were basically founded coding theory, who founded, uh, who, di who basically uh, explained how many information can, can go through a noisy channel and everything. So it set up um, a framework where basically you can show how many information you can, can go through a channel. Okay? How many information goes through a string. Okay? That's basically channel theory. And channel theory, what the conclusion of that is that if you want absolute privacy, okay, you need a random string of the length of a string. Okay, you need a random source, but if you want to send a gigabyte file, you need a gigabyte uh, random source. Okay, you need a, to share a, a random key of a gigabyte. 
Okay, so basically for the internet it would be a huge mess. Okay, because if you want to send uh, a gigabyte file, then you would need first to send a, a random source of a giga, giga, gigabyte long. Okay, so it's completely crazy it's, uh, because uh, you would need, then need uh, you you don't want anybody to know this source, so you would need another source. You, there is no no solution. Okay, so what did we think? the cryptographers is that basically we basically don't care about perfect privacy. What we want is that somebody who gets the message won't be able to distinguish between this message and a random string. And the, ba the key idea behind that is that we have limit limited power. Okay? We don't want to wait until the end of the universe to decide whether it's random or not. We have to decide, decide fast. We want to decode the message before it's worthless. Okay? So, basically, because of that, if we take into account that we are not allowed to, to go forever, for instance, the busy behavior here to write all these ones, it will take at least all that long to write all these ones. Then, we can hope to have some smoothness again. Okay? We can hope that everything will get better. Okay? And that's what we hoped. So, what I'm telling here is that basically what's going on with the fractal here is that it looks, it looks random in some sense. Okay? You have these random file elements that goes everywhere and uh, and we would like to be able to give some notion of complexity which would be look random. Okay, look random to us. Okay, look complex. Okay, because we know it's not complex, it's just generated by your simple files. But we want to tell that it looks complex. So, we have to take into account that we have limited power. Okay, and limited power, as we've seen before, it's polynomial time. Okay, we will allow to work polynomial time. That means that if we have a string of length n, we will allow to work for a polynomial time on n, but no more. Okay, we will consider that we will try to solve the problem in time n to the c for something. Okay, so what can we do from that? So what we will try to do is exactly defining pseudo-random strings as strings that looks random to any polynomial time algorithm. Okay? So what looks means is full. I mean that you will try to build random strings that fool any polynomial time algorithm. So what full mean? So imagine that you have here an algorithm. Okay. It works on some input and use some random bits. For instance, you use uh, your simulations or, uh, or for instance, you want to use some randomness to, to accelerate your program, to speed up your program or whatsoever. Okay. So usually what you do is that you assume that the random source is uniform. Okay. You have uniformly uh, random bit uh, that arrive. Okay. And you get some input. Okay. But you don't get an input because you have a random source here. You get a distribution of your inputs. So, the question is, is well, I have, I have constructed my pseudo-random sequence and I'd like to check whether it's a pseudo-random sequence or not. So what do I do is that I plug it inside the algorithm instead of a uniform one. And we will consider that it's pseudo-random if the output does not change too much. What do I mean by that does not change too much? It's basically that the distributions are close to each other. That means that for a given input, okay, the distribution of the input won't change too much. Okay? So what's going on here is that the limitation is comes from here. It's that you impose that the algorithm works in polynomial time. So it won't be able to check everything. Okay, for instance, you won't